In this video, I'll be pulling together the receiver circuitry for the Magnus. Uh, let's just quickly throw, walk you through my uh, plan of attack. So first, uh, I'll start with a few quick notes on the USB setup. Uh, then I'll move on to step five here, and that's the receiver switching circuitry. Um, and uh, that consists of these two relays here, plus there is an off-board FEP Q1. After that's complete, I'll be moving on to the uh, bandpass filter. Uh, switching circuitry, which you can see here is step six. Um, I'll also uh, be building up the bandpass filters themselves, and I'll be uh, building for 40 and 20 meters. Uh, so as soon as I've built them, I'll test them, test them on the uh, spectrum analyzer, and we'll make sure we see the, uh, the, the appropriate bandpass filter functionality. I'll be moving back to step seven here, and step seven is basically there's a so, uh, some diode clamping here, there's uh, a preamp here, and then we have the usual splitter arrangement here, and uh, there's a two and a half volt voltage bias at the uh, center tap of that, of that splitter. Following that, we'll move on to the Talo mixer itself here, and you'll recognize this as a familiar configuration. We have the uh, FST 3253 here, which is the heart of the Talo mixer. And then we have these two op amps here, which, uh, which uh, amplify the signal. The result of which is we should get an I and a Q signal out here. Now, this, this I and the Q signals here goes off to the PCM3060 uh, for, for, for ingestion there. Uh, but basically, I should be able to probe here and here and see an IQ signal uh, that's a representation of the, uh, the RF coming in here. So that's the plan of attack. Um, like I said, I should be able to, at the end of this, I should be able to inject RF into the antenna, and I should be able to hear a result in HDSDR running on my uh, Windows laps laptop here. Um, just to please note, I, I am deviating from the manual here a bit, um, so if it goes wrong, it's, it's all on me. So when I left the last video, I had a signal uh, Magnus uh, device appearing in, in, under LibUSB. It turns out that that's actually not the correct configuration. The correct configuration is what you can see here, where we have a Multus SDR control device under Lib USB Win32, and we also have this Multus control under the sound, video, and game controllers. Uh, during troubleshooting, I'd posted on the Magnus forum, and I'll provide a link uh, to that below. Uh, and none other than Stu, uh, N8VET, uh, the board designer, answered and fixed my problem, which turned out to be related to uh, having previous drivers from my RXTX Ensemble build uh, on this Windows machine. So uh, if you ever see this video, thank you very much for your help, Stu. I really appreciate it. So just before we uh, move on, uh, I've got HDSDR running here. Uh, and, and like I said before, I had this previously set up. Um, so I've got this configured to use the uh, Multus SDR control um, as my control device. And you can see my local oscillator frequency right here is uh, 13 megahertz. And you can see over on the oscilloscope here, I'm probing the output, uh, that quadrature output. And you can see indeed I've got uh, 13 megahertz coming in the output. So let's just... Uh, Go down a little bit, and there you can see the, uh, bear with me, uh, sorry, I am uh, moved the wrong thing there. So you can see there, now I'm down at 7 megahertz, and uh, indeed the uh, the oscilloscope is, uh, is seeing a, a quadrature signal at 7 megahertz. So kind of this confirms that uh, everything is set up from a USB perspective, uh, HDSDR, which is the software uh, that I'm going to be using as the uh, as the SDR on on the laptop is all set up and configured correctly, so I can move on now to uh, to the next steps. Okay, so I've installed uh, Q1 and Q2 and the associated resistors, um, and basically when TX is uh, enabled, this is five volts, turns the FED on and pulls TX neg to ground. Uh, when TX is not enabled, this is just floating. Uh, similarly here, when you're on one of the upper bands, and, th and that's kind of hard-coded in the firmware of the radio itself. Um, so when you're on uh, 20, um, 10, this is 5 volts, turns this fed on, and pulls this to ground. So let's just see where that is on the circuit.
Okay, so you can see uh, Q2 is uh, right here. There's those two resistors associated with it, the uh, 100K resistors on the right-hand side here. And then Q1 is all the way over here. And that's the uh, 1K resistor associated with it. So what I'll do next is I'll get the uh, relays installed. And then we should be able to hear those relays click on and off as we go into transmit. And uh, on and off um, as we go, as we change the bands. So let me get those installed. Uh, just a thing to note, uh, there's a diode associated with each of the, uh, a flyback diode associated with each of the relays. So I'll make sure I get that installed too. So I'll get that installed and come right back. Okay, so that's relays uh, K2, K1, and K4 installed. And each one of them has their, a flyback diode. Obviously, you have to keep, uh, um, take care to observe the polarity of the diodes. But so let's, uh, uh, let's uh, see if they work. Okay, so here we are. Uh, so let's test transmit first, and I'll be quiet so that you can hear the relay clicking. So now you can see it's transmitting, and you heard that relay click. Let me turn it off again. All right, that confirms that uh, the transmit relay is clicking off and on. So let's uh, check the band uh, relay now. Okay, so the band relay, I'll just swap between uh, 14 megahertz and uh, it clicks to the lower band around about 9 megahertz. So you should hear those relays clicking. And I will uh, check for continuity on the, on the relays after this to make sure uh, that's set correctly. But uh, you should hear both those relays clicking. So that confirms the relays are uh, in operation. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll just check the, uh, that the relays are switching correctly by probing, uh, probing the, the actual relay uh, points themselves. And uh, so that'll be right next. Okay, it's a bit uh, tricky behind the camera, but we, but we will try. So on receive, these two, this is K2, the reverse side should have continuity. You can see that. All right, so let me just click over to transmit. Now, the other side of the relay should have continuity. It's hard behind the camera, my apologies. There we go. Uh, and, you know, similarly on the other side here. So let me just, so, so these two should have continuity. Now, on transmit. And there we go. So what I'll do now is uh, I'll check... Um, the other transmit relay and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, so here we are on the reverse side of K4. So let me check, it's the same situation on this relay. Uh, in this case, these two pins should have continuity. There we go, let me just click uh, transmit here. Now the other two pins, so, so this middle one's the common in the relay. So now these two should have continuity. Awesome. So let's move on to the band pass. So just checking the uh, the band pass ones, and I'm on the high band. That's uh, 10 megahertz now. So these two should have con continuity. There we go. Let me just uh, change down to 9 megahertz. That should swap to the lower band, and then these two should have continuity. There we go. So that uh, confirms all the relays are acting as. Uh, as they should. Okay, so these are the little uh, bandpass filter boards, um, and uh, you can you can tell the bandpass ones because they have room for three inductors on them. The uh, low pass filter boards have two inductors on them, and then on the other side, you've got uh, you've got these capacitors here. So this is the other side of that. There we go. like that, and then these bandpass. Um, Filter boards go across here and here. And I'm not sure which is the high and which, which is the low, but, but I'll find out. So what I'll do is I'll build up uh, one each, uh, for at, one at 40 meters and one at 20 meters. We'll get them installed on the board and then uh, should be able to hook, the, hook it up to the, um, hook it up to the uh, spectrum analyzer. And we should see as I switch bands, it should uh, 
it should select between one or the other of the band filters and we should see a peak at the appropriate band. So let me get all that put together, put on the board, and then we'll come back. Okay, so uh, here's the two band pass filters completed. Uh, this is the 40 and 60 meter uh, uh, band pass filter on the left here with the T37-2s. This is the um, 20 and uh, 30 meter band pass filters with the T37-6s. Um, and uh, if for those who are interested, this is the actual circuit of the band pass filter. You can see there uh, it goes L1, L2, and L3, and that's L1, L2, and L3. Um, so there's the structure there. These values are provided in the Magnus filters documentation. And then finally, if we just uh, go to where they, uh, where they are on the PCB, so this is where the band pass filters go here. So here is the high. Uh, I said it didn't know which was high and low last time, but it's got an H and an L next to it. So this is the high one. So the 20 meter band pass filter will go here and I'll put the 40 meter band pass filter here. Um, now so to test this, um, so I've also installed the antenna jack here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this up to my spectrum analyzer. So the tracking generator uh, is going to come in here. And then I've uh, attached a BNC uh, connector to uh, to C72. That's where the um, that's basically where the input signal first comes in. Um, so what I'll do is I'll tracking generator in here. I'll uh, sample out here to the uh, spectrum analyzer. And what we should see is as I switch bands, it should uh, we should see that pronounced. Um, uh, band pass uh, filter signature at the 40 and 60 and at the uh, 20 and 30 uh, meter um, frequencies. So anyway, I'll get that all hooked up and come back. Okay, so here's the uh, the board with the band pass filters installed. This is the uh, 20 and 30 band pass filter. This is the 40 and 60 band pass filter. And as I mentioned, I've got my spectrum analy analyzers tracking generator port coming in here and this is where I'm sampling it. If you could just see uh, right down here, this is uh, this is C72 right here which is the first capacitor in the uh, receive path. So let's uh, move over to the um, spectrum analyzer and see the output. Okay so here's the uh, here's the trace and uh, it, it is looking good so this is kind of what we would expect from a bandpass filter. A uh, little bit of insertion loss there. I've got the um, tracking generator at, uh, at zero dBm. Uh, but let's have a look at the, the two um, frequencies. So you can see one is at uh, 9.56 megahertz and two is at 14.736 megahertz. So that encompasses the, um, the uh, uh, 20 and 30 meter bands right there. So let's, uh, let's switch that. Let's go down to uh, there we go. You can see now that the, um, let's move number one down. So we've got it down here. And then let's go over to two, move that down. And now you can see down the bottom here, we're, we're now between 4.62 megahertz and 7.84 megahertz. And this encompasses the uh, 40 and 60 meter uh, bands. So the band pass filter appears to be working fine. There's uh, just swapping between them. Uh, so all good. Um, what, I, uh, what I might do is this video is getting a little bit long. Uh, so I'm going to wrap the video at this point um, rather than moving on to the receive circuitry, which I'm sure will have some interesting challenges in it. Uh, but uh, progress is pretty good. Um, Band pass filters all installed. Um, the relays are all installed. Um, connecting up to HDSDR. So all that's done. What I will do in the next video is move on to the um, uh, to the preamp, to the splitter, and to the Talo mixer and the op amps after that. And hopefully we should be able to inject the signal and. Uh, Here's something out of SDR. Anyway, that's going to come up in the uh, next video. That's all for now.